booktube i'm cheyenne welcome back to my channel today i have a super fun video for you <laughs> I'm so excited because I am doing a collab with my good friend Sam from Sam Reads a Little. I will actually put her channel below that way you can subscribe to her because she is freaking awesome. One thing I love the most about Sam is that she is very diverse in her reading. So if you're looking for someone to follow who reads a lot of every different genre, I think you should definitely subscribe to her and check out her videos. She reads a lot of thrillers. She also reads a lot of different subgenres and romance I really think you'll enjoy. And she has a really great take on how she describes books. She's also very honest, which you know I'm a huge fan of. So go to her channel, show her some love, and let's get started. So for this video, I'm gonna be sharing my favorite Kindle Unlimited books. I really do enjoy reading on my Kindle. So when I discovered Kindle Unlimited, I was so excited to have a source where there were so many free books. Y'all, it's awesome. Kindle Unlimited, I feel like it's hard to say when you say it fast. <laughs> it's a subscription service through Amazon where you pay a monthly fee and I think it's $10 a month and you get up to 20 books that you can rent out. It's freaking awesome. There are so many like old indie books that a lot of people don't know about that aren't familiar to newer readers and the romance genre in Kindle Unlimited is awesome. The first book that I'm gonna share is Intoxication. This book I tell everybody about because it is one of my favorite taboo romances of all time. It's very forbidden. It's definitely that forbidden fruit that most people tend to not gravitate towards, but I do, and it's great. Intoxication follows Sia and Drake and also turns into a love triangle with Raiden. Sia meets Drake on like a chance kind of encounter. He's 45 year old businessman and is just super kind, which you don't find that a lot in CEOs, especially in romance books. You tend to find alpha and controlling males and he is very alpha, but he is just kind and considerate and loving. You can tell he loves his family. He cares about his employees, just an all around great guy. And you can sense that from the beginning. Sia meets Drake. They instantly have this connection and you can tell from the very beginning that there's a lot of sexual chemistry there. There's just this undeniable like draw towards each other, but they part their way. It takes about three times when they coincidentally run into each other where Drake just has this urge in him just to spend a night with her. So he offers her a proposition and basically says, you're incredible. I know I don't really have like a chance with you, but I'll pay you because I know that you're struggling and I'll pay you just for the night, just to spend the night with me. I don't want you to think I think you're a hooker or some type of prostitute, but I just genuinely wanna spend the night with you. Sia soon finds out that Drake has a lot of baggage, baggage in the form of a wife, and that ends up ruining their morning together the next day. You can just feel how heartbroken he is in the beginning. Just, this man just wants to be loved. A year later, Sia happens to be dating Raiden, and Raiden is, just kind and loving and caring and attentive to her, a really great boyfriend and she truly is in love with him until he asked her to go home and meet his family. I, I can't say enough great things about this because both of these men are incredible and she would be lucky to have either one of them and you can see her gratefulness throughout the book and you can see how much they truly care for her and it is so angsty and just, just the fact that Drake thought that he would never see Sia again is enough to just pull at your heart. And when you're reading their first encounter after a year, you're like, oh my gosh, these guys are so great. How is she going to pick? How is she going to decide who she loves? Read it. The next book is Dancing with Sin. This book was an emotional roller coaster in the best way possible. This book follows Alice and Alice is your straight edge perfectionist. She just is always striving for the best in everything. She's a dancer. So to her, perfection is something that she has to show until her world comes falling apart. She loses her house, she loses her job, she loses her fiance, and everything just goes to crap. Well, Alice is ready to start over, so she goes and she moves to Chicago with her sister and her fiance. Her sister is this like, I, I wanna say she's, she's going to school to be a lawyer or she's interning or something like that. She's this cutthroat chick that is just all about work, all about business, and really shows that she has no time for her sister, even though she's gracious enough to let her live there, but she just is busy. Alice gets to know her fiance and they hit it off. Ethan is just this great guy. You really can see him desiring to spend time with his fiance, but she doesn't give him the time of day. And Alice just happens to be there. So this is their story and how they navigate the sister's fiance relationship. You can only expect drama to come from it. 
but this is really great. And actually, this is quite a long book, but you, it, it does not feel rushed. It does not feel like it's missing anything. You get the perfect closure at the end. It's perfect. The next book is Storm by Carrie and Cole. I adore this book. The book Storm follows Evie and Storm. A chance of bad weather happens to affect Evie and she's left stranded in the woods. Her car goes into a ditch and she has no way out. And it's snowing and she's piled in and she's just basically stuck there. Until Storm comes along. And Storm happens to be this famous rock star that Evie does not know about because she doesn't keep up with the times. And her and Storm happen to be snowed in together in her car as he's trying to help her with his dog. If you love the forced proximity, the rock star romance aspect, the kind of enemies to lovers in the beginning because Storm is very set in his ways and Evie is very fearful of a lot in life. She is not used to not being in control and she's terrified of a lot in the beginning of this book. And Storm really helps comfort her and she wasn't expecting that with him. And you see a lot in the beginning that they have to they have to go through all these like awkward moments together. I mean, when you're stranded, you think about where do I pee? Where do I take a crap? <laughs> where, like, what do we do about food? Um, what's your dog going to do? Like, how are we going to get out of here? And where do I even go next? How is anybody going to know that I'm missing? So it's really entertaining in the beginning with how they navigate that dynamic of being stranded. Storm finds that he's like, I don't want to say goodbye to this girl. And it's their story after that and how they choose to just forego the rest of the relationship. But there's a lot that's tied into it that I'm not going to spill. But um, having a relationship with a rock star is not easy. And having a relationship with a woman who's already in another relationship is not easy as well. This next book, it was a short chance that I found it, but I'm so glad that I did. And this book is Gravity. This book will take you on a whirlwind. And I actually am almost positive it's a duo. I can't even remember. I remember the entire storyline, but I can't remember if it's all in this first book. I think there's two books to it. This book follows Zara, Alistair, and Nash. Nash is my son's name, actually, so love that. Zara's sister and her boyfriend were actually killed in a plane crash two years ago, and Alistair's son happened to be her sister's boyfriend. Zara is just a hot mess. This girl, like, works at a strip club. She doesn't even know what she's doing with her life, and she's doing meaningless things that serve no purpose to her life or benefit her in any way at all. One day Alistair shows up at her doorstep and he's like, hey, listen, my son Nash is not doing good. You know, I'm this big businessman. He's a multimillionaire, owns a private island. And my son is in the public eye and he's basically trashing his reputation. I will pay you $1 million for you to pretend to be his girlfriend for three months. You're gonna have to live with us, but the $1 million will be yours at the end of it. And I'm just hoping that he can get his life together and that this will help build his reputation up. We're familiar with each other. Our families are close friends. We have this tragedy that happened that kind of brings us together. I think you would be perfect for him. Zara soon finds out when she accepts this that Alistair is a very broken man and is very traumatized and hurt by, you know, the accident that happened with his son and his girlfriend. And he's just struggling with how to, how to keep going on and how to take care of his son, Nash, who is a grown man, but is just dangerous and careless and screws anything that walks and just has no consistency and no sense of responsibility. And he's struggling. Well, lines are crossed, guys, and this is a love triangle. This is forced proximity. You are just gonna feel so many emotions reading this book. It takes you on a long journey of just self-discovery for Zara, self-discovery for Nash, and Alistair is very selfless in the sense of how much he loves his son and then how much he grows to love Zara. That's all I'm gonna say. The next book is Weightless by Candy Steiner. Weightless follows Natalie and Rhodes. This deals with Natalie who she has always had this self-image insecurity. Her family has always made her feel like she's overweight. She's not, you know, she's not presentable. She doesn't take care of herself the way that her family wants her to. And to her, she has just had this insecurity in her because of the things that have been said to her. So she thinks that, you know, the way she looks is not okay. It takes her boyfriend of forever to cheat on her and to tell her that she's not good enough. She doesn't look the way he wishes she would. 
that can only do so much to a girl's confidence. So she decides that she's going to get a personal trainer. She's going to kick her butt into gear and she's going to lose some weight, start focusing on herself and just take it from there. Well, that's where she meets Rhodes and he is our hero. Rhodes is the personal trainer at the gym and he is cold and dark and shut off and wants nothing to do with anybody. Rhodes has a lot of secrets and you find that Natalie is very gullible in the love that he shows her and he does it in a way that he doesn't come right out and say like I like you but he starts to show it gradually as she just continues to be persistent especially with taking care of herself and I think he starts to find that attractive and the way that he builds her up was just the sweetest thing. I mean this man kisses her stretch marks, he just praises her and loves on her for her body and you know, the progress that she's made. He's constantly reassuring her how proud of her he is, but good things don't last forever. And there are issues that come up and Rhodes's plot for revenge and plot to finish something that he's been starting for a long time intertwines with Natalie's life in a way that nobody expected. And it was a huge plot twist. Like I'm telling you, I did not see it coming, but it made for a great story and I loved it. I, I loved every second of it at the end and I understood where the writer was going and as I look back and think about the things that happened in the beginning, it makes a lot of sense. Great book. This next book is Out of Love by Julie Ann. I am a forever Julie Ann fan. A Place Without You by her is my top favorite book of all time. She is a one click by author for me. I will always buy her books. I love her. I will talk about her until I can't talk about her anymore. The way she writes her characters pulls you in. Out of Love is a different book. It, this is a book that, which when you look at the cover, you don't think it's going to be as dark as it is, but it takes you on a roller coaster ride. Out of Love follows Livy and Wilder, and Livy is a carefree, adventurous. This girl's a spitfire. She rebels against everything she's asked to do and told to do. And partly it's because her father is so overprotective and overbearing, which can be expected. Livy happens to notice that a new guy moved down the street and she's curious about him. He moved into this home that is supposedly haunted and nobody has lived there in forever. And he has this mysterious dog that he brings everywhere with him. So she starts getting nosy and she weasels her way into his life. He wants nothing to do with her. He is like, can you just leave me alone? Just get away from me. But his dog happens to be drawn to her. So she like tries to use that as a way to get to him. We find out later on that as they form this relationship and he eventually lets her in, that Wilder has a plan. And this plan is big. The things that happen in this book, I, I, you will be, you will be so shocked. Your brain is going to be like, what the freak just happened? What just happened? Like Wilder has this whole other life that you learn about and this whole other side to him. And Livy is just like, yes, I want you still. I don't, want, I don't want to say anything and give it away. They are soulmates, y'all. They are soulmates. And it is so beautiful and captivating to read. Captivating. And I think that is the perfect, perfect word to describe them. They, they literally, they are like soulmates. Wilder is dark and twisty, but just has a spot for love for the right person. And that is Livy. And Livy just loves fearlessly and loves endlessly. And their devotion to each other over everything that they go through in this book is what they write true love stories about. Y'all read it. It's phenomenal. The last book, and this is one of my favorite books of all time. And this is My Favorite Souvenir by V. Keelan and Penelope Ward. I have talked about this book so many times because I adore it. I just think that the entire premise of it is perfect for the fun reading that I like when I want something that's lighthearted and that's going to make me laugh, but also like steamy and has drama in it and just keeps me entertained. This is my go to book for that. My favorite souvenir follows our hero and our heroine. And I'm going to say that and you'll find out why because our heroine, she is actually stood up by her fiance the day before their wedding. She happens to still be in the town where she was supposed to get married because she was obviously ready to get married the next day. She's still in that town and she meets our hero, 
I keep wanting to say his name. She meets our hero and they're in a hotel lobby. She overhears him pretending to be this couple who booked this room because there's no rooms available because of a snowstorm or something like that. He's like, oh yeah, my name is Milo Hooker and that's my room. So they end up giving him the room and she overhears it and she's like, shoot, I need somewhere to stay tonight. I'm gonna go and play along with this. So she goes and pretends to be his sister and she said, yeah, my name's Maddie Hooker and that's my other room that's with it. And he's looking at her like she's crazy, but he's, she's like, you're over here lying. I'm doing the same thing you are. I need a room to stay in just as much as you do. It's so funny, so funny. This happens to be where Milo lives and they end up staying there. Nothing happens between them. It's purely platonic. And then at the end, when they're like getting ready to say goodbye, Maddie is like, hey, like, why don't you show me around this town? I'm here. I mean, might as well make the most of it. I don't live here. And before I have to go back home, like I have all this time off of work because I was supposed to go on a honeymoon, but that's clearly not happening. So he just shows her around the city and it is, <laughs> it's so cute. It's so cute. They decide that they're going to prolong this and actually make a road trip out of it. The title of the book is because everywhere they go in every new city that they visit, they pick a new souvenir up along the way. The book is separated into two sections, a part one and a part two. And the part two, Maddie and Milo, they find out that they had a lot more connection to each other than they thought originally, which makes it such a small world. The point behind the book too is that they never share their real names. So she doesn't know his name and he doesn't know her name. And it's just supposed to be this fun time for them to just get away and forget all the troubles of their life. There's a lot of forced proximity because they have to stay in different hotel rooms as they go together in order to save money. It's like a one room thing. And they just go through all these different experiences and all the towns that they go to. And it is just, you're gonna laugh until you pee. You're gonna I just, you're gonna swoon. I adore this book so much. That's it, y'all. That's all I have for my Kindle Unlimited books. These are all of my favorites. Oh, a lot of them I ended up buying personally because I just loved them that much. I hope you guys get a chance to read some of these. If you have Kindle Unlimited, they are awesome, perfect. We'll freaking knock your socks off. I'm telling you that right now. Go check out Sam. I will link her channel below and that way you can click on it, subscribe to her, show her some love. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for supporting me, for listening to me and just being awesome. That's all I got. Comment below. Let me know if you've read any of these. I want to hear from you and don't forget to subscribe. See you later guys. Bye.